bought it, we loved it, we lived it, paid less for it, got more of it, and we didn't Napstertize it. 1985 minus one, okay, that's today plus what? 2002 minus 84 equals? 1984, one plus nine plus eight plus four equals today, which is just, 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 just. Good morning, and welcome to our road trip. Alan T. is a personality that is constantly pushing the envelope and perception of what a music artist and performer can be. Okay, tonight's proceedings will continue in the following fashion. It all started with someone taking his voice from an answering machine and putting it into a track. Since then, he's gained legendary status amongst the nightlife scene all around the world. We want to be legendary, 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 legendary. His career can be defined in many areas of the nightlife, from managing the doors to some of New York City's biggest parties, with talents such as music producer Peter Rawhofer and Junior Vasquez. His time in the studio is more like a daily regimen, and he doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Bring it like you're legendary. Hello everyone and welcome to MMG TV. I'm Mel Chestnut. Tonight's guest is legendary. He has a familiar voice that's been heard on dance floors all across the world. He's been known for having a bullhorn and working doors at the most amazing parties in New York City. I'd like to welcome legendary vocal artist, Alan T. Hey Alan, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. How's everybody doing? <laughs> good, good. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Alan T. Custom made suit. Honored, honored. I bow, I bow to. Nipper put on in Poland. <laughs> the high priestess. Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> he made in Poland. That was a bad, that was a bad matinee, Vegas. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Waiting for the package at my front, my front gate. So you're, you're at home in, in Miami. I'm at my home in Miami, my childhood home, the home I was born in, which is for sale if anybody wants to buy it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, quarantined, gardening, cooking nonstop. I've gotten, I, I run out every now and then to key little mom and pop stores to spread, you know, the little bit I have, you know. Mm -hmm. I've been working throughout, strangely enough. I've been uh, touching base with DJs and performers uh, that wanted my vocals on, you know, websites and what have you. I did a, a spot for the promoters in Chicago, I believe, for, for uh, Go Girl. <laughs> dot com oh nice uh, i've been doing like little pay-per-view things you know like nothing's free anymore right well, uh, I, know you've been over, I kind of enjoy doing a lot of like you know gratis things for people throughout the years but time has come to like you know batten down the hatches as they say mm -hmm. how did you get started in in the whole nightlife industry and work in oh, the, and the first gig i had i was just i'm gonna post a picture of my ig uh it was at Danny Tanaglia's legendary party at Groove Jet, the Y&T party, which was a key record store of Todd Saunders, which started out a lot of big DJs, uh, Peter Rohoffer, Danny, Seven Fisher, you name it. I mean, everybody shopped there. I mean, people have traveled from all over the world. And I did the door for the VIP, which was like all the famous DJs would attend Danny's parties back then. And it was like Carl Cox, this one, that one, you name it. I mean, the list goes on and on. TKC, uh, I was mining the VIP for the parents of the famous TJ, <laughs> strangely enough. It was 20 below, and I had been like, you know, an aficionado a lot of a lot of big DJs and like a muse of sort, like kind of bringing things out of them. And then it just took uh, somebody taking my voice off an answering machine and putting it on a Jody Watley track, which was a sample of her voice called Come and Get It. That was the first featuring of me. And then they got me in the studio, and that was like that. You still hear all those acapellas to this day. I mean, mm -hmm. the Brazilians and the Mexican DJs that are up and coming are like, you know, insanely obsessed by it, strangely enough, to this day. Uh, but then everybody started calling, and I kind of just like gave more of the chance to the underdog up and comers than the big guys. I mean, I was working with the big guys naturally. I mean, you, Danny, Junior Vasquez, Peter Rolfer. You name it, it was like, you know, it's like a, dropping so many names, I have to pick them all up. But 
I gave a lot of chance to a lot of the underground up and coming DJs and that was in the progressive house era. So I really blew up. I mean, I traveled the whole entire world. I mean, I was in Japan, Australia, you name it. I was everywhere. So that's pretty much, I mean, it was off of an answering machine though. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, whenever you do your studio work, is it, is it um, kind of like a practice what you preach? Do you, do you write a script or is it, um, I like to have a, a beginning concept, like if it's physics or what have you. And if I get stumped, I, I collect a lot of newspaper articles and texts. I mean, I have science books laying around. I'll just pick up and, I mean, there's a part of Jonesing where I said, she fucked me for 10 hours. I don't know if I can say, you know. I was like reading from a crime report of a, of a, <laughs> of a woman who got raped. It was like, it's like crazy shit, but that's what people like. I mean, when you're t- twisted, you're twisted. But it, it t- that, that track totally makes sense. Um, cause when you're jonesing and then whenever you find your fix, it's kind of like you, you are fucked for like <laughs> however many hours. <laughs> right. Well, it's like, yeah, you're like kind of stuck. So it kind of like fit. I got kind of a little stuck. I don't get stumped very often. I mean, my rapid fire can go on for days and days as you know very well. Mm-hmm. But, uh, like the door, they just gave me a premise of, and a context. And it was written about the location of where score was lastly on Lincoln, on, uh, on, uh, Collins, no, on Washington, sorry. Uh, the door, the freight elevator, over there with the large headers with Power Infinity, Connie Casserole, Paloma De Laurente. A lot of people rest in peace. You know, a lot of people were, have passed. I didn't realize it was about that particular spot. Yeah, because that had a freight elevator. It was Marcello was the doorman of Liquid, one of the doormen. And, I know that entire, uh, that entire track, I mean, word for word. <laughs> I know, I know, and then I threw in a lot of, like, you know, references to old house songs, like Can You Move is an old... Uh, Modern Romance record, which I really mm-hmm. liked. I really liked the Queen of the Rapping scene, actually, which I did a lot of takes of. And then I got into the Can You Move, which everybody to this day is like, Can You Move? I mean, it's like, <laughs> I'm like a, a shade, like a go to shade, right? Reference, if you will, right. yeah. But it's like, if you can't get in, can you move? I mean, can you get out of the way? Right? Can you get out of my fucking way? Can you shake to the Latin groove? Can you move? Can you move? You, you, you right? <laughs> you to the left. That all came from just like, me just going off. I mean, you know, the to the right, to the left, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's a lot of editing. I mean, if you heard the original, I mean, it's the pieces that stuck together in the main a cappella came out like my eyes are on the screen, like waiting to be taken and sampled and used. And there to this day, it's a DJ staple. I mean, from gay, straight, you know, you name it. Everybody, rec- everybody's record bag has a copy of it everybody I mean. yeah you're pretty popular even in the in the straight scene because you yeah. know you work the door at one of the most famous clubs around in the space I've been for 15 years and counting i'm going on my 16th yeah and you always have a, a different ensemble a different outfit every weekend like it's gotten it's gotten out of control it's kind of got it, went, it was like you're kind of like you know it's been progressive and after the cancer i kind of like went for the gusto i just like said fuck it and just started going even more and I've been working it together with a lot of designers like, you know, Scooter LaForge and, and Octavio and Stud Muffin, a lot of Patricia Field people. I know of, some of your, uh, some of your, um, your jumpsuits are two or three thousand dollars, you know, since and some, yeah. the one that you wore um, when we went to Vegas together and after Paolo played, we went to, um, was it um, Dunkin', Dunkin Donuts? Donuts? Yeah, and your it was an orange suit, and you had like Bugs Bunny coming out the pocket. <laughs> yeah, you have a good memory. You have a good memory. Oh yeah, because you took the bullhorn inside, and you said, um, "You go sausage." It got me sausage. <laughs> sausage, egg, and cheese. Yeah, That's my, my personal <laughs> bullhorn. A sausage, egg, and cheese. I actually remember. There's actually a customer at Space who remembers us from that morning. I met him at that that morning. Was that Juan? Um, Our friend Juan that lives in Miami. No, another fella. Oh, okay. <laughs> cute, cute little boy, cute, mid, Middle Eastern kid. So, I, recently you've had you had a major cancer scare, and um, yeah. that was that was pretty. It scary. was right here. It was a uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. I had like a. It was stage two A. They caught it right in time. I got into the doctor's appointment actually a couple of months prior to when I should have been operated on. It was a January seventh. I was operated biopsy given to me on the ninth, and by. June 2nd, I was at Life Ball, and I was at Mid- Night Vegas that year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just, like, beat it with, like, Reiki, meditation, sleep, a lot of sleep, no carrying on, no alcohol, no nothing. I mean, not, I'm not a big drinker anyway, but I'm a teetotaler. You were still working full-time. And I was working full-time, mm-hmm. yeah. 
I didn't miss one day. And I was wearing, I was featuring the face mask thing because I was kind of a little bit worried about, you know, getting, you know, contaminate, you know, germ germs and what have you. But yeah, I just, I, I brought like, you know, Tracy Young, Jaime Cardona, my best friend, all my friends to my chemo treatments and we just had a party. Mm -hmm. It was like Michael Goldstein was there. A lot, a lot of my good friends. Uh, I did a lot of chemo and a lot of radiation. And the last radiation, I was on the flight May 31st to Matinee Vegas to work for Jake. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was a light fall too after that. It was a pretty big um, tumor that you had. It was like the size of a lemon too, right? It was. Good memory, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember all of that very, very I know, close. Girl, she was, and I have, I have a tattoo here. I have a tattoo from when I got the radiation. So oh, like, really? Yeah, they give me a, they give me a tap, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boys. So you're completely cancer free now. I'm cancer free, yeah. I'm cancer free. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I um, well. Wow. So, so with this whole COVID um, crisis, how are you dealing with that? Being that you, you know, your profession is the nightlife, and I know. I, I think we're going to be in the latter stage. I'm, I'm hoping for the best because space. You know, we we pack them in like sardines, and we're a big venue, and we're social distancing is not always welcome at space. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be, but I mean, we're not really about that. We're pretty much about people you know, laughing and singing together and, you know, what have you. I mean, doing shots of tequila. Oh, look who made it. The high priestess of the house, my, one of my uh -huh. favorite pussies besides you. Mm, this is Lily. My Russian blue. Get, go away, go away, go away. Get your booty out of my face. Come on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough one because we have Floyd, which is a little bit more intimate. You know, it's a little bit more about, you know, like a, like a boudoir feeling and that's what have you. And like right next door, right? Between. Yeah, we're, and that's in the basement. Yeah, I work there on Saturdays and then okay. I go into after hours. I mean, like it, like the whole scare, the beginning of the scare was uh, my birthday. We celebrated the week after Valentine's weekend, which was like March 7th. It was Marco Carolla and we had 7,000 people through the door. Wow. And we have a, we had a lot of Italians, we had a lot of Albanians, we had a lot of, you know, Ethiopians, French, Spaniards, you know, coming through. Even the owner's mother was coming back and forth from Milan. I was like, that's why after Winter Party, I kind of like, that's why you saw that live feed. I was, I, I called the paramedics and said, I don't do lines, uh, those kind of lines at the ER. Mm -hmm. Get me in. I called, I said, bring me your VIP bracelet that got you. <laughs> I had that that Nina Flowers fever, you know, after that party of Ryan's uh, and Danny's uh, for Climax. It was a really good party at Trade, Score, what have you, in the lobby there. And I was, it was packed. It was a thousand people for a 400 person venue. Wow. So the next, the next, I think it was Tuesday, I was getting these headaches that were like really, really weird. And I'm sure we probably all had it. Or, I mean, I, I got, I got tested, but I tested for eight COVIDs, uh, for eight Coronas. It's a panel of 15. I, it was back then. This is the beginning of the closures. And uh, Lily, get down. Get down, Lily. She's on the turntable, actually. <laughs> She's on top of the new Martinez Brothers release. Oh, yeah. I love the Martinez Brothers. This is a new release on vinyl. Um, but uh, so after that, I was a little bit, I was a little bit I was concerned about the headaches and the fever. And I never really had that, so I got tested and I passed the, I think it was a panel of 15, I did eight and I tested negative and uh, I was clear, you know. Because back then the CDC had to authorize the prerequisite tests, you know, mm -hmm. for the final. Yeah, so, now, now, now they do those tests where they can like, I guess the antibodies where they can tell you if you've had it in the past. I and know, I I mean, we probably all had it. I mean, I yeah. don't know. I don't know, girl. It's like I had the same symptoms that you did. I had a low grade fever for We all did. And I had We all did. Everybody thought it was like circuit fever, pre winter music conference fever. I'm like, no bitch, I don't feel well. Lily no sleep, another club fever. <laughs> right? You know, next place, another club, next DJ. It's like yeah, no sleep, know. another club, another fever. <laughs> That's what it is. We go from our, you know, ups and downs. We go, you know, from like, you know, Turning it out and satisfying the masses to like recluse you know, behavior and yeah, I had a headache that lasted nine days and it was just it was a headache. I just couldn't get rid of it. So I, I felt like I had a mild case of, of it for you sure. You had MMG fever, girl. That's MMG. Yeah, right. <laughs> MMG, that's MMG fever between like green velvet floats and what have you. Look at your beautiful pool in the back. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, right? We're in my library now. This is part of my library music and is that actual um like books and stuff behind you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. I'm, I'm reading it kind of, my, it kind of looks like a um even though I've been to your house a million times, it looks like a um you know, a backdrop, <laughs> but but it's not. <laughs> oh, the fake, oh, like the fake, yeah, yeah. I'm reading yeah. the Mandela Poor book, I love it. Like the tilting house or that's like upside down or whatever. Right, everything's kind of tilting in our lives. You're still so kind of tilting not, a little bit. Why but that not? mannequin that's behind you, I actually have a couple really good pictures with her that Alexi took out by your pool one day. Remember? Oh, yeah, 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 that's her, that's her. The girl, the girl that has no guest list. <laughs> and then that's you have one out by your Mercedes out front too that's, yeah, that's my security guard. <laughs> that's right. I don't remember you said because, that. Because you never know. A few blocks from Biscayne Boulevard, you know, you never know. You never know. I'm excited. I got my nails done today. Oh, big, wow. That, that big step. That looks good. Oh, girl. Geo did that? Geo did this. It's not gels, but it, it'll do. Mm -hmm. At least I'm not, I, I look like a housewife from Hialeah. <laughs> like beaten up well they look actually fierce but i shouldn't i shouldn't say that but. what is what would you say your your most um how do i say like crazy um event have you ever had like one in particular that kind of sticks out that well i think the life ball fan <laughs> not a fan but like a person fan <laughs> oh like a like a like a like cucamonga like oh god like I, don't know, I don't know about fans, but in terms of event, the life balls that we did, I mean, which are no more, I mean, rest in peace to that event, even pre-COVID, it was something that wasn't going to go on anymore. Those events were just amazing, where they put us all on a plane, and you're with, like, you know, Amanda Lepore, Yasmin Petty, you know, Hector Fonseca, you know, all the, uh, you know, big, uh, Patty LaBelle, uh, Kylie, you know, Kelly, Kelly, Jen, uh, uh, Kelly Osborne, uh, uh, Caitlyn Jenner on your flight oh, and right. it's like amazing I mean you have all like the crash fall all the all the all the drag you know the RuPaul girls it's amazing it's and you party it's, from it's like a red carpet event for well we well you get on the flight in JFK well you used to be able to you get on you got on the flight in JFK and you partied all the way to Vienna and then when you got to Vienna Red Bull had a red carpet event yeah oh wow it was unbelievable and then you did the Friday night event it was very action packed, and you were exhausted on Sunday. But Friday night you did the meet and greet at the uh, at the hotel, and then at the Meridian, and then you did uh, the, uh, the the main event at the Palace. On it was five hundred rooms, unbelievable on but Saturday you, night. You would per perform there, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. We perform. You do everything. You do you know meet and greet. You perform. You do all kinds of madness. How did you get involved with that in the first? Hey, place? Jake Resnickow. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jake is a big boy with that. Yeah, <laughs> I love Jake. Yeah, yeah. He and he's he knows everybody everywhere. I yeah, remember he, when he was involved with he's that. He believed in me since the day since day one, and he's always included me in everything. And I, you know, I welcome Jake always. Thank you, Alan, very much for joining us this evening, and we hope to see you soon and stay safe. Thank you so much, Sean. On behalf of myself and my home and my cat. And all my possessions, I wish everybody well. And keep on keeping on, just like Seabox said. Yes. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> and got to be strong, got to keep on keeping on. Yeah, 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 yes, we will. Yeah, 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 yes, we will. Love you all. Thank you, Mel. Bye. Bye -bye. Thanks for joining us on MMG TV. Be sure and tune in to DJ Dan Slater's Facebook page this Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time for a special corn tea dance presented by Aveda Pharmacy. Monday, we have special guest, Israeli producer, model, actor, and entrepreneur, Eliad Coed, also the producer of Papa Party. We will see you then. Have a great weekend and be safe.